Boy, is this a strange looking rifle. Hey guys, welcome back. Today, <clears throat> we're going to cover uh, a rather more obscure firearm out there that's been uh, gaining popularity recently. We're going to take a look at this unique version of the AKM made in Hungary. It's uh, commonly referred to here, here in the States as the AMD 65. Uh, I don't read Hungarian or speak it very well. The rough Hungarian translation is Automatic Modified Descent 1965. We'll go into why it's called that here in just a, bit, in just a minute. Uh, this is a gun we've been testing out for a long time. It's a custom-built model of a friend of mine. We've been using it as a test bed for various AK magazines and accessories. <clears throat> and uh, we've been trying it out and have grown to really appreciate it. And... Uh, Thought I'd give you a little background on this rifle before we uh, do a quickie once view of our once over rather of this uh, particular variant of the AMD 65. <clears throat> the uh, gun started out as well. It's as you can see, it's a variant of the AKM rifle. The uh, front guard, hand guard, however, is made by uh, a perforated sheet metal, and it usually has a vertical foregrip uh, on the front end of it. We've changed that out. We'll get to that later. <clears throat> This is basically to help uh, control it during full automatic fire as this normally has a very short barrel on it. Uh, it was once really obscure. The AEMs D65 has seen a bit of a renaissance lately due to its service in Afghanistan. It's uh, popular among uh, the Afghan Free Afghan Army, Afghan Border Patrol, and uh, a lot of mercenaries and contractors have been using it. Uh, the <clears throat> the gun really to to cover the gun you kind of have to go back into a bit of history. Uh, during the Second World War, Hungary was an ally of the Germans in World War II, and uh, there was some really heavy fighting in that area of the world. In fact, uh, one of the elite German SS units of the war was destroyed in that country by the Soviet Union. Uh, of course, after the war, Hungary was uh, quickly turned into a puppet state under the Warsaw Pact and as such was uh, forced to adopt Soviet military doctrine, tactics and equipment. Uh, of course the USSR at first didn't hand out uh, arms to its puppet states. It was more than happy to sell them but some of the new friends of theirs, Hungary included, were a little too proud to buy Rus Rusky imports so they were forced to be puppets of the communists um, they decided they were going to make some of their own weapons, and here we have the AMD-65. <clears throat> the original designers uh, took the uh, AK-47 and AKM and decided they were going to use that as a basis for a new rifle for the Hungarian military. Uh, they had some criteria. The first um, commercially produced <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> rifle, or military produced rifle rather, uh, for the Hungarian army was the AKM-63, which is pretty much a copy of the AKM. Um, they took that rifle and they wanted it to be smaller, lighter, and easier to carry. Uh, but they wanted it to have the same operation, interface, and same caliber uh, as the AKM. They wanted it to be usable by both officers and airborne troops. And later they added that to uh, armored personnel and uh, they wanted to overcome a major drawback to the AKM which is uh, muzzle climb so uh, they wanted a reduction of muzzle climb um, they wanted a folding stock to help of course with the paratroopers and later the uh, armor personnel give it a you know make it smaller lighter and uh, they were originally wanted it to use a 20 round magazine now as I said before the D in AMD stands for descent and uh, its intended use right off the bat was for paratroopers. But various other branches. <clears throat> excuse me, a little dry throat here. Of the Hungarian Armed Forces, like mechanized infantry, armor, some support units also took interest in it. And, uh, it, uh, let's see here. 
Sorry about that, lost my train of thought. Anyway, the uh, Soviet doctrine, of course, is a swarm attack. And uh, the Russians knew they'd, they'd almost always have numerical superiority in any uh, battle. So they based their attack doctrine around mechanized infantry with helicopter support and an uh, aggressive close-range combat. And, uh, of course, they, uh, they backed this up with their armor, like the BTR and um, hind helicopter and stuff like that. <clears throat> so they designed the rifle for that type of combat. Uh, it wasn't really needed to fire 600 to 800 meters away. This was a, you know, you wanted a small, compact bullet hose. And the Russians were pretty much figuring this out with World War II, where most of their infantry, especially late in the war, were given PPSHs and not the Mosin and the Gaunts. They still used the Mosin and the Gaunt, of course, but the PPSH was cheaper. Uh, it was easier for new guys to use. And uh, was generally, you know, when most, most people, scholars, when they read, you know, World War II books and... Uh, things along those nature, you find out pretty quickly that most people didn't really need a rifle. They never really shot more than a hundred yards at, unless they were a sniper. So the AMD is essentially an outgrowth of the old uh, short close range combat. Uh, and of course it's chambered in the 762 by 39 round, of course to give it compatibility with all the other Warsaw Pact states. <clears throat> but of course this comes to a criticism of the design that it's, uh, it's built for short range. So, uh, you have a short sight radius on it, and uh, it's supposed to be inaccurate, um, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that when we start talking about this gun in general. Um, but, uh, as I was saying, it helps if you that's pretty much the history behind it. <laughs> now, as to why they chose specifically this layout, um, I can't really find out. I've, I've done some research online, and... and uh, like I said, the only thing I could find out was what, that they basically wanted a vertical foregrip. This is all up to engineering, and <clears throat> a lot of those Cold War records are hard to find. I actually had problems even finding pictures of uh, original Hungarian army soldiers um, with these weapons. They, I could find a few of them with AKMs and, AK and AKM-63s, but not many with AMDs. But uh, hopefully with the archives and the Eastern Bloc open up to Westerners, we'll, uh, we'll get some more spiffy pictures from the other side of the Cold War. Anyway, this is my friend Steve's AMD. I'm going to have him go into specifics and have him tell us all about his rifle. Um, I'm going to give you my impression of using it first, and then uh, he'll tell you what he's done to it. <clears throat> there's a couple things about this rifle I don't like, and there's a lot of things about it I do like. So, uh, first, first, first thing first is the number one thing I hear about these guns is that they're inaccurate. Uh, because of the short barrel and the short sight radius, which is even a little shorter, of course, because of the short barrel over AKMs, they're inaccurate. Uh, when we shoot this, we found that to not at all be true. Um, the American versions here with the um, Firearms Act limit uh, requiring at least a 16-inch barrel, a lot of these guns have a uh, large muzzle brake attached to the front, which throws out, by the way, a hell of a concussion. It's a very loud gun uh, compared to other AKs to shoot next to, and if you're standing next to it, you'll definitely feel the round go off. It puts out quite a muzzle blast. But <clears throat> when we were shooting it, it was actually extremely accurate. Uh, better than most of the AKs we had been firing recently, so we were pleasantly surprised. Um, it might just be this particular model, this one version, but we were happy with the accuracy we got out of it. Um, one thing that you would have to take into account between our version and the factory version is obviously you can see on the uh, the original version here, you, you just have a t or you have a tubular stock. Where ours, we have a cheek riser, and we'll have Steve tell you about that in a minute. But without this cheek riser, I can see why you would not be getting a good group. It, it is impossible to get a good cheek weld on this. And without this cheek riser, when Steve originally got it, I hated shooting his rifle. I can't. I mean, I couldn't put my face anywhere on the gun. I couldn't. I mean, it was just impossible. To put it down. In fact, I told him that if I was going to shoot it again, the first thing he was going to have to do was put an optic on it if he was keeping that stock because he couldn't hit anything. You can't line up the sights very well. When you do, it's painful to your neck and to your face. So uh, I think that may actually have had quite a bit to do with it more than anything else. Uh, even a well trained shooter is going to have bad accuracy with the factory stock. <clears throat> uh, a lot of things people do on these AMDs is change out the handguard. Uh, most people want to use 30 round magazines and they're really difficult to put in this gun with the Ford handguard which is basically an AKM 
uh, pistol grip turn backwards if, if it's even turned backwards and put on the front um, it makes it really hard to lock in a magazine so <clears throat> seeing guys use um, some types of these spacers uh, a different vertical grip and uh, of course we've got Steve's angle vertical grip on uh, this particular gun and uh, that makes that improves it quite a bit the thing with this lower handguard is it does get really hot so uh, you're gonna want something you're not gonna put your hand on this it's, it just does not uh, do a good job of dissipating heat one thing some people have said is that it's not as reliable as the regular AKM but I, I'm not really sure why that would be um, any different than a standard one um, as I said at the beginning of this video there's a lot of um, uh, uh, Afghan military groups they use this gun and while I have no doubt that their maintenance is probably pretty poor which would lead to any stoppages I don't really think that's any problem with the gun I mean it's, it's an AK M with a few modern, you know, a few small modifications, and nothing in the operations that's a major change I can see. Uh, maybe just the short, slightly shorter barrel, you know, might would be the only major difference as far as affecting the amount of gas coming into it. But I mean, there's there's all kinds of short barreled AKs out there, and they all work fine. So I think that's just either poor training on the Afghans part, or like anything with like with the AR-15, it's you know, a couple people have had stoppages or a few things and like anything it gets blown out of proportion by people who need to have something to complain about. The example you see here before you is a, uh, a TGI built gun and of course this is our test bed for the AMD 65. It uses I believe a Node X Spud receiver um, and uh, uses parts kits and the reason uh, I picked this gun was twofold. One, well, I had availability to it which makes, uh, makes sense of course but two I've noticed that uh, these are becoming more popular and they're very inexpensive compared to a lot of other AKs. I, I walked into a local gun store and despite the gun bill having failed, um, of course it's still, you know, you know, it hasn't been that long since it failed. But anyway, the uh, price for the Romanian AKs is still high. I saw one for sale at the side folder for $9.99 and all I could do was shake my head thinking, you know, two years ago I bought that same gun for $350. You know, of course, you know the the price gouging continues. It'll uh, it'll come down with time. Um, questionable as to how much. Anyway, AMDs can still be uh, had. They're still in stock, and a lot of them are pretty inexpensive. Ready? So uh, you know, it's I I've had an interest in one, and like I said, we've been using it as a test bed. So uh, I'm gonna turn this over here and uh, take this uh, model in here. This is uh, my friend Steve's gun. You guys have seen him. He's usually the one shooting in my video. Because I don't like to be on camera, and uh, have him tell you about uh, his AMD 65, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, this is my buddy Steve's AMD 65, and uh, we have shot this quite a bit. So he's going to tell us about it. So tell us about your rifle here, Steve. Uh, this is my second AK. Um, comes those of you familiar with AMD, you know it comes with the same front and rear hand grip. Um, I got rid of both of them. Um, I'm running a Magpul AFG on the front and a Hogue Overmold in the rear. Um, I do have the AMD Tech 65, AMD 65 Tech cheek riser bolted on. Uh, I'm probably going to end up taking the bolts out and welding it. They sell a weld-in one for an extra 15 bucks, and I should have just gotten that one. Um, it's a little dirty right now, but I have polished the internals of it. Um, on the other side of it, you can see the E93 sling mount in the back. This one, right is, there, the, the me this one is the V3 version. Um, it does clear the uh, stock release button back here, and you can kind of see where I had to modify the rear grip to clear the, Let me the stock that. release. Let me see. Oop. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Yep. Uh, and then, I don't know if you can be able to catch this on the camera, but <clears throat> I did modify the rear sight a little bit and widened it out. It makes it much easier and much quicker to get targeted. Oh, yeah. Position. Rifle Dynamics is selling a sight that's similar to that yeah. for like 200 bucks. It yeah. is very expensive. Yeah. It is very expensive. And you either have to send one in or pay a core charge, and it's like a yeah. six-week turnaround. So um, let's see if we can open up the stock and show you what it looks like. Opened up. If I'm not mistaken, this is a TGI built gun. And so far, it's pretty good. The only qualm I have about it is there's a lot of mag wobble. Uh, using polymer mags, Tapco's, these Bulgarian slab sides, not so bad. Uh, U.S. Palm mags, not so bad. When using metal mags, they do wobble quite a bit, but 
Have you put a drum in there? I have put a drum. It works great with the drum. Yeah. Believe it or not, the drum doesn't wobble nearly as much as the regular metal max. I've had it on my Waster, same thing. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's very good. Some people uh, do not like the, the cheek riser. They find it very uncomfortable. I've gotten used to it. <laughs> Me being one. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten used to it. It's a lot of fun. Um, shoots tremendous fireballs. Yeah, it's got a hell of a concussion and a decent fireball kind of. Yeah, yeah courtesy, courtesy of this muzzle brake yeah. down here at the end. I actually have another one on order from AMD 65 Tech. It's uh, it's just a three port, and it will no longer have this barrel extension, but it will still exist. Is that welded? And this is yeah. this is welded. Yes, okay. you can see a little spot weld on the, on okay. the top there. But uh, the the next muzzle brake will look a little bit nicer, and the overall length will shrink a little bit, but it will still be over 16 inches. That's cool. So in our experience shooting it and running through various magazines in it, uh, we haven't had any problems with it. It's fed every time. It's fed steel mags, pro, uh, drums, polymer mags, uh, Tapcos, Bulgarians, U.S. Palms, you name it, it's running. So it's been a very reliable gun. Um, if you're looking for an AK and uh, you want something maybe a little bit different, or if you've already got an AK and you want to add something to your collection, maybe want to give it a choice. Um, it's also very popular as an SBR. In fact, most people I've seen using it in uh, real combat, you know, uh, have the SBR, what we call the SBR version. Uh, I believe that's the factory configuration, of course. So, uh, but like I'm saying, if you uh, if you're looking for something a little different, but you want AK reliability, and uh, especially right now, if you just got to have yourself an AK, um, give it a take it into a, take it into serious consideration. I think you'll be happy with it. I think it's a pretty good rifle for the price. Uh, you're going to have to do a little bit, a few changes to it, I think, to make it ergonomically feasible. But uh, I think it's a good rifle for the money and a good alternative to the cheaper uh, AKMs out there. So I hope that helps. hope you guys found it interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to post them up, and uh, we'll see you real soon.